All right, next is uh, Mr. Tom Farrell and his uh, scratch building of his layout. Tonight, he's going to uh, to show us a station that he's put together. Tom, welcome. Thank you for having me. Um, this evening, I'm going to jump off of my uh, Salt Creek River Basin because um, I was waiting for some things to arrive and they just arrived today. So what I'm gonna to do today is feature a scratch build, um, a scratch build depot that I made. Um, I'd like to pontificate a little bit on scratch building and, um, and O scale. We had a couple of fellows on from O scale. Uh, I think everybody knows I model an ON30. Um, you know, we're considered the um, somewhat of the black sheep of the O scale world. But ON30 provides, the, as far as the structures are concerned, the mass or the size of O scale. So it's very, very good for scratch building. And, um, you know, Jim had me on a modeling lifestyle back in November of this past year. And, um, you know, I started out at N scale in 1967 uh, when N scale was in its infancy. And I modeled in N scale to 2005. And then I switched to O scale, ON30 specifically, because I liked to scratch build. And it was just too difficult, even though I did scratch build in N scale, uh, even as a child. Um, you just, I just couldn't achieve the detail that I wanted. So I switched scales. And those two fellas mentioned that, um, you know, as we get older, you know, I wear these, like all of you that are my age or more, you know, these um, reading glasses so I can actually see my modeling. O scale is just easier for that than N scale or even HO scale. And the other reason I mentioned, um, or I'm always pushing scratch building is um, I scratch build for the uniqueness of the models that I create. But the, the side benefit or, or the other driver is um, the costs. The costs are significantly less. This depot that I'm gonna show you this evening, you know, total material costs can't approach 20 or $30 tops. But if, if there was such a kit available, you know, it would exceed $100. $150 easy for a laser cut kit. So the, the benefits of scratch building are the uniqueness of the models. You know, these are one-offs that nobody has. And there is a huge cost advantage. It's not necessarily my driver, but it can be a driver to keep the cost down with um, discretionary income. Um, so anyway, enough of <laughs> enough about that so this is the uh finished model and i'm going to show you how i made it um <clears throat> every time i show one of these i just want to demonstrate that with commercial siding commercial windows commercial uh, roofing materials and scale lumber <clears throat> scratch building is not as difficult as people might believe it to be. It is really a, a relatively simple process that just requires patience. And, um, you know, if you don't have subject matter, look at an old railroad magazine or uh, go online and look at Google for structures. You don't need a precise drawing. I mean, I, I've said over and over, when I do these structures, I don't really even have a plan. But these are the basic materials. So for example, Mount Albert Scale Lumber is one of my choice suppliers. These are the basswood sheets. I've switched to acrylic paint. On this particular model, I use base color of uh, this lemon custard. You know, these are like a dollar or less per bottle. And this is white. These are the alcohol washes. I posted these, but on this particular model, I use my own uh, mix of just simply isopropyl alcohol in India. Um, and then this is the whole key to um, the weathering. I use this wire brush. Um, I'll, I'll go over the technique again, but the concept is base color, 
um, scratch it, hit it with an alcohol wash, and highlight it with white. I do this over and over and over, and I think it gives you really uh, contest-winning results, my humble opinion. I always start with a piece of plywood, aircraft grade plywood, typically three eighths or five eighths inch thick. This is the only planning I do. I uh, just outline the general, where the foundation goes and uh, I'm off and running. I, I didn't even have a reference photo on this one. So I take that scale lumber and I simply sketch out uh, the sides with a uh, it's with a ruler and a uh, modeler square. So that's the other thing about scratch building. I only use really a exacto knife, a modeler square, and a metal ruler. Those are the three tools that you need to do this quality of modeling. It's really all you really need. <clears throat> so you sketch it out, cut it out, using your square. One of the key things when you scratch build is you want to keep everything parallel, perpendicular, square. It just makes for easier assembly. So I'm very careful to maintain uh, the squareness of all these walls and cutouts. And then this is the model going together. Um, Areas that aren't critical, for example, here, I know there's gonna be a roof here and this is gonna be covered. So, so this might look sloppy, but, and these corners might look a little rough too, but they're all gonna be trimmed out. So you don't even need to have this precision cut. What I like to do is I like to match this siding uh, so that they're <clears throat> on the same horizon. Because when you do trim it out, it just looks better when the sidings match. So I do pay a little attention to that. And I always brace my models <clears throat> with this quarter inch basswood. Um, it just makes for a very stout model. And I typically build the foundations up with that quarter inch material as well. Whole point here is there's nothing here that anybody that has ever modeled anything couldn't do. This is not difficult modeling. It's just a question of patience. So here we are looking down at the model. You see the stout. I might go a little crazy with the bracing, but it, like I've said over and over, it costs virtually nothing. And why not make it so it'll last into the next millennium? <clears throat> so here's the model coming along. I've added this addition here. One of my other tricks that I always use is I typically like to use multiple sidings on on my buildings when possible, just to add variety. So this has a board and batten, this has a siding. I do that to have the appearances that at some point in the future, or at some point in the past, they added this addition to the side of the building. It just adds visual interest to the whole, to the whole idea. This is actually HO um, board and batten. <clears throat> I don't know why I had a sheet of that, but I thought, eh, let me just use that. And again, my signature uh, bracing inside. There's a little photograph and a little, little more clarity. Again, you can get a little sloppy here because it's gonna be trimmed out. Um, <clears throat> here's the first, I. I paint the inside of my buildings black because I don't typically detail the inside. So when you look through the windows, the acetate windows, you can't see anything. That's by design. This yellow is what I call, this is that lemon yellow. It's some obnoxious color at this point, but it's my base color. So uh, it looks very loud here, but as you see, it'll get toned down. So again, you're just painting with a brush. Because this paint's water-based, if you don't brace it like this, or you, and you, if some people pre-paint their walls on the bench, 
I always paint my walls on a finished, you know, with the model built up. The model built up with combination of this bracing, you won't get any warpage of the uh, of the walls. If you use these acrylic paints and you don't, if you paint them on the bench and you don't have them braced, they can warp. I never have that issue because I brace them and I paint it while the structure's up. So here's the technique I alluded to. <clears throat> now that looks nothing like that yellow. So it's a trick, you know, that's the, all I do is I use that scratching tool that I showed you in the beginning. I scratch this yellow up to the, to I reach the base material. Then I hit it with one of those alcohol washes that penetrates into the exposed wood that I've scratched. And then I take a dry brush of the white that I showed you earlier, same acrylic, and I highlight it once everything's dry. In this particular case, um, prior to, I decided to paint the base, the perimeter green just for a little decoration, but it, same technique, I use this, this Kelly green, uh, you know, an acrylic paint, scratched it with my scratcher, hit it with the black alcohol wash. And then with a dry brush of white, I highlighted the, uh, the boards. And you can also see the beginning of the deck that I'm going to put in here. There's an up close. No, for virtually no effort, that looks pretty spectacular, <laughs> you know? So it's not difficult to do. Base coat, scratch, alcohol wash, highlights. Simple process. Here's the beginning of the trimming out of the, of the building. The windows and doors are test fit. This is the uh, decking. Now this this will be this decking will be toned down and these weather these windows will be weathered. This is just scale of one by six material pre-painted and then super glued just around the entire building, covering up all my sins on the corners of the building. Here's the beginnings of the roof. This is one sixteenth inch plywood, super glued on there. Again, you can be sloppy because it's gonna get covered with shingles. This is plywood here. This is a little piece of balsa wood. Um, this is a two by eight, just glued on there. Oh. This brick here, I went online and I looked for uh, basically brick images. So I wanted to use brick here. Remember this photograph's about twice as large as the building is. <clears throat> but even at that magnification, that brick's holding up pretty well for just being paper, but it cost nothing. I just pulled off the image, brought it into PowerPoint, printed it out on my inkjet printer, with Elmer's glue, I glued it around the perimeter of the building and now I have a brick foundation. Um, I added a trim pieces across here, that'll be touched up there. And then here's these, uh, these are just little pieces that are glued, you'll see a better picture here in a moment. Um, those are, guidelines I put on the roof. Um, not really showing anything different here. These are the, you can see the two different sidings here. And uh, I did carry the color across the new, or across the other material as well. This is more of the roof, just a simple triangle of 1 16th inch uh, plywood. I like to use plywood for these roofs because it's very thin and is very strong. <clears throat> and here's the side. So these are just little two by 
look like two by eights that are just super glued up there. They're cut on an angle here. They're measured out typically in uh, 16 or 24 scale inches. I think these are 24 inches centers. They're just made on the bench, pre-painted and super glued up there. There's that brick paper. I mean, it doesn't look too shabby for brick for just a printout. These weather, these windows aren't weathered yet, but the, and this isn't touched up, but the things, the model's moving along here. <clears throat> There's a little pullback shot showing uh, the overall look. This is still not weathered, but the roof's on. These are those evergreen, real um, cedar, laser cut um, shingles. This is where the sign will go for the depot. It's just a little piece of 1 16th inch plywood. And uh, I think I use one by twos just to frame it out. And there it is toned back. So I've, I've washed that deck out. So it's not so stark brown. And I've washed this out a little bit. I've hit it with, hit this roof with a uh, dry brush with that white acrylic. I've popped in my sign, which is nothing more than PowerPoint again, where I just did a text, Turtle Creek, and uh, everything's toned down. I've added some details on this. Um, some tools here. I create as much as I can on the bench work, and then I drop this into the layout. There's the other side. Um, see that that's not quite weathered yet, but uh, the, the white highlighting does wonders for uh, toning all these colors down. This is the back of the building. It's always my joke, no dumping, and I always have junk there, just a little joke. And then uh, these are just right off of uh, Google searches. Um, this is a detail from somebody, probably Grantline. The other side of the building. Really nothing to this, just you start here and you glue one, you glue another, you glue another, you glue another, you just keep, just a question of patience. Then when you're all done, you hit it with blacks and whites, just dry brushing. The whole thing's been dry brushed with white. Yeah. I haven't got to the door there yet. But. This is a nice little model and it's unique. There isn't such a thing as a kit of a little depot like this that I'm aware of in O scale. And um, I'm guessing, not counting the figures and the detail items, I'm guessing it's with the cost of the siding, the shakes and the doors that it's $20, $30 maximum. Um, and that's a, O scale. That's O scale. And that's a, I mean, that's a, Nice little building. I get a lot of compliments on this guy. And uh, <clears throat> they're enjoyable little things. And it, you know, the step-by-step, -step, any, any of you guys out there could do this. You don't need to be a, a world-class modeler. You just need to have patience. And you're using commercial materials. If you wanna take scratch building even further, you can cut your own uh, shakes out of cigar box, material, um, or you can um, make your own windows. I mean, you can take it as far as you want, but um, even with commercial siding, commercial windows, commercial shakes, you know, you're, you don't have big money into this. And it, um, as a hobby, it um, it's nice to say that I built this, this is mine, it's scratch built. You know, there's a certain amount of pride in finishing a laser cut kit, of course, but to me, it's even more meaningful to me personally to say virtually everything on my layout is scratch built. 
unique and one of a kind. I don't think there's any greater thrill in the world. No, I just after I got done saying kits are bad. <laughs> <laughs> I could have made these boats. This is going to be next week. Um, I've been, I'll get back to my um, Salt Creek River Basin. I've been waiting for these boats to arrive. I'll build these kits. This is an abandoned rusted hull. It's too long for my layout. So I'm going to cut this thing up, make it shorter. And I'm going to build this as one of these two versions. Once they're in my Salt Creek River Basin, once they're finished, then I can cast my river and move on. So, but next week I'll probably fit, these are resin kits and uh, I'll feature this next week. Um, and that's it folks. If there's Tom, uh, this is Greg. I have a question if you don't mind. Yeah. Um, I just, uh, I'm on in a scratch build right now and I've recently started using some of the aircraft grade plywood for roofing instead of basswood and i'm going through a lot of exacto blades with it is there any trick to cutting that stuff or just what you said we're going to go through a lot of exact okay <laughs> if, it's, if it's thicker than one sixteenth of an inch now i'm mostly using one sixteenth and one thirty second yeah no the only um uh, if it gets any thicker than that i use my little uh, micro mark table saw this little tiny saw uh -huh. that's the only trick uh i have you could you if you have one of those obviously if you have one of those you would have used it <laughs> <laughs> but if you have a, a little i have a micro mark saw mm -hmm. it has like a three or four inch blade something real small and it, 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 i don't remember what that saw costs but in the neighborhood of a hundred dollars let's say it'll okay. cut right it'll cut right through that there's, they have two versions of that saw, a very expensive one, and I have the cheapy. And I've had the cheapy one for 10 years. I've never changed the blade, ever. Uh -huh. <laughs> and it'll go well, right through, the, it'll go through that plywood like it isn't even there. Okay, well, that's good news. So I, yeah, I think so far I've been sticking with the thin grades just because I wanted the, the thinness was the reason I went to the plywood. Um, so yeah, it makes for that one sixteenth inch material makes for great roofing material because yeah. you want the roof, you know, when I put these boards on here, the trim boards, you don't want to see that you have a really heavy basswood or heavy plywood roof. Yeah. Virtually disappears when you use one sixteenth inch material and then you shake it, you know. Yep, that's why I did it. Thank yeah. you. Tom, thank you so very much. We really appreciate it. Thank you again for having me. Yeah.